Hey everybody, today we're going to cover how we grease our Ford F53 chassis on our Winnebago 2012 motorhome while on the road. If you remember, we full time and we just got through showing you how we do our oil changes. And whenever I do the oil change, I always follow up right behind that with a grease job. And like I said, those oil changes, depending on where we are, we do it in a campground. And when we get to a campground, that's a good place to do it. Usually around three, four, 5,000 miles, we do an oil job and a grease job. So today, I'm gonna to show you how we do the greasing part coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. The first thing I want to do is put up here on the video a diagram, the official diagram of the Ford F53 front suspension chassis. And we're going to go over real quickly what we're going to be doing today. So let's look at the diagram. As you'll see on the left, there are three grease points on the passenger side. And on the right, there are six grease points on the driver's side, totaling nine positions, okay? So on the left, you have two and four, which is the upper and lower kingpin. And on the right, you have one and three, which is the upper and lower uh, driver's side kingpin. Then you have on the right, number five, you have the left tie rod. On the left, you have number six, the right tie rod. Number seven, you have the rear drag link. Number eight, you have the front drag link. And number nine, up above, it's kind of hard to find, but this is the steering gear. So those are the nine points. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to address the kingpins. And when I get underneath there, I'll show you why. Okay, so let's go over the list of tools and things we're going to need to do this grease job. As always, I have my trusty fold out piece of cardboard here. And this makes, whether I'm on uh, grass, gravel, concrete, it doesn't matter. Having this underneath there, I can slide in and out, makes everything great. And when this gets worn out, I just go dumpster diving and I go get me a new one. That simple. I got a second piece here today for Joni because she's going to be underneath the chassis with me filming on what we're going to do. Now this greasing the chassis is an easy job to do as long as you have the right tools. Okay? And it's not that difficult. The first thing we're going to need is a big block of wood and an eight ton bottle jack. I don't have the handle or a piece of pipe in here. I just use a screwdriver to pump it up and a pair of pliers to release the pressure. The next thing that we're going to do that we're gonna need is an air compressor. Now you need an air compressor anyway, because when you're on the road, you need an air compressor for your tires. And one of the biggest questions people ask is, well, I need an air compressor, what kind do you get? And some people buy those tank, uh, the big tank ones, or even a small portable one at Harbor Freight or Home Depot. But the problem with those is, is you get accumulation of water in there, they're big and bulky, and you do not want to be putting condensation and water in your tires. So I ended up buying this tankless. It's a 12 volt, you put it on your battery posts, Look at the footprint on this thing. It is so small. I keep this in my tool bay. It comes with two 50-foot coiled, uh, I mean two 25-foot coiled uh, hoses. And it'll, this will go to the front and the back and all around my coach with no problem. This thing here is awesome. All this stuff you're going to be able to see in our store. But for, to me, this is the only way to go. Now, the reason we need an air compressor 
is because we're going to be using a pneumatic grease gun. Let me tell you, you do not want to be doing this uh, chassis with a handheld manually pumping grease gun. You will kill yourself. <laughs> but if you hook this up to a pneumatic grease gun, this little tip right here will lock right onto those zerk fittings and all you got to do is pull the trigger and bam, 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 it'll fill those areas up with grease. It makes this job a breeze. Now, after we pump in the new grease, we're going to be pumping out the old grease. So we're going to need abundance of paper towels to wipe off that grease and some thinner to use on our hands or tools or whatever to keep them clean and easy to handle. And lastly, this is the kind of grease that I use. It's a multi-purpose lithium-based grease. I'll show you a picture right here. This stuff here is great. I've been using this now for about four years, and this is a great multi-purpose grease. You can get it on Amazon. It will also be in our store. And then we're gonna slide up underneath there in just a minute. But while I'm here talking to you, the first tip is going to be we are going to do the driver's side and the passenger side kingpins first, and here's why. Now on these chassis, you want to grease those kingpins loaded and unloaded, okay? So that's why we have the jack. We want to raise, even though I am level, we're parked, the, jacks, the leveling jacks are down, and there's some pressure off of that axle, we want to use this bottle jack and get up underneath it and raise that uh, axle on either side, one at a time, just a little bit. We do not want to raise the tire off the ground. We want to uh, lift that tire up a little bit and get some more of that pressure off of that kingpin. And then we're going to grease the top and the bottom zerk fittings on, on that uh, kingpin on both sides. Then, now that the weight is totally back on the axle, we're going to grease it again top uh, kingpin and bottom one. That's going to be loaded. So we're going to grease both loaded and unloaded. This whole thing will take about 10 minutes to just do the kingpins. After that, it's hitting the tie rods and the drag links and the power steering unit and we're done. All right. So let's get started. Hook up the air compressor and slide under the chassis. The first thing we're going to do is hook up the battery cables. Put on the positive and put on the negative. And the next thing we're going to do is put the cardboard underneath here. But we don't want to put it under the axle, just right up to the axle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you the placement of the jack. You want to put it right here, somewhere in this area, in the middle, right here, okay? So that's why I've used this block. It kind of takes up some of the space of the jack. It gets me up here real quick. Pump the jack and raise the axle. And I want you to watch the tire. We are not going to raise the tire off of the ground, but we are going to take some pressure off the axle. You see how, you see how, watch that tire. Watch that tire right there. You see there? We're taking some of that pressure off. One more. That's it. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're, now that we've raised the, the weight, some of the weight, off of the axle, we're going to grease the bottom zert fitting right here and the top zert fitting right up here on the kingpin while it's unloaded. Then we're going to release the jack, let the pressure come back down on the axle, and then grease them both again. And then we're gonna flip over and do the same thing on the passenger side. Okay, so you can see here, this is the zert fitting on the bottom of the kingpin, and the top one is up here, okay? Now the top one, you actually can come in from the wheel well and come down on top of it here, but I'm not gonna do that since we are uh, since I'm showing you here, we're going to just do it this way. So the first thing you want to do, you know, you've been driving several thousand miles. It's got dirt and grime on there. You want to take a paper towel and just clean that zert fitting. And then you take the grease fitting and it'll snap right on there. You see that? 
and just hold that hose there and pull the trigger. Okay, so watch there, folks. See that old grease coming out of there? That's, that's what you need to do right there. We're pushing out the old and bringing in the new. And that's all you need to do there on the bottom. Okay, so the same thing here. Joni's up top filming this. And you're going to clean this off. And like I said, you can actually take the grease gun and come from up there and grease it. I'm, I'm doing it this way so you can see. She has to have the camera up there so you can see what I'm doing. But she still can grease it uh, from down here too. It's not that big a deal. And snap it on. Here it snap. And here we go. And there you have it. That's it. Okay, so remember what we just did. We did the bottom zert fitting and the top zert fitting on the driver's side kingpin. And we did it with the bottle jack having it unloaded. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these pliers and release the pressure, take the weight, put the weight back on the axle, and now we're going to grease those same two fittings with the axle loaded. Okay, so with the jack removed and the weight back on the axle, I come back to the lower one, snap it on in there, and pull the trigger. And then I go back up to the top. And that takes care of the top loaded and so now we're going to do the same thing on the passenger side i'm not actually going to show you because it's the exact same process that was that was not bad uh when you get your gear and you start doing this it literally takes no time at all it takes me a lot longer to show you because i got to get the right camera angle and i got to get some lighting underneath there and all that but when you actually do it like i said when you got the right equipment it's good to go as I told you, a good mechanic, a professional mechanic, will tell you that you need to do these uh, kingpins loaded and unloaded. And so we, done, we have done that. Now what we want to do is start the engine and turn the wheels left all the way, right all the way, and then bring them back to center and get that new grease worked up in there. And then we're going to hit the top and bottom grease fitting one more time while it's loaded. So now we have just five points left. This stuff is easy. So the first thing we're going to do, we're back on the driver's side, is we're going to do the left tie rod in. So this is where we just were, the lower kingpin. If you go right back a little bit, you have the tie rod end right there. Pull the trigger. See that new nice goodness coming out of that boot? That's it. Okay, so here was the kingpin, back there was the tie rod, and here we have the rear drag link. And now we're getting ready to do that, to grease it, and uh-oh, look here. The hose cannot get up in there and snap on there. Now, normally, when I do the kingpins and I turn the wheels back and forth like I showed you, I would leave the wheels cocked to one side and shut off the engine and that would move the drag link forward or back, whichever way I turned the wheel, and I can easily get that up in there. But I brought the tires back to center to show you this problem, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start the engine, turn the wheel, move the drag link so we can get the hose on there. Now, I will say, I actually uh, bought a 45 or a 90 degree zert fitting, and I was going to replace this so I wouldn't have to do that, uh, you know, to move the tire. I was going to have a 90 just come out and push out this way. But when I went to go remove this one here to insert that 90, it was not cooperating very well, and I was afraid I was going to end up busting this thing in there. So I just decided to leave it alone and just turn the wheel. 
is not a big deal. So let's turn the wheel and get this to where we can get the grease fitting on it. Okay, you see there, you turn the wheel left, the drag link moves forward. You want to do this in short bursts. Allow the boot to fill, allow that grease to kind of penetrate up in there, and then hit it again. And that's it. Okay, so we just got through doing the rear drag link. So now we're just gonna come in here and wipe the grease, the dirt and stuff off of the front drag link dirt fitting. Snap that on there and pull the trigger. Let it kind of seep in there. Okay, the next, the next one we're gonna do, and this is the last one on the driver's side. This is the steering box right here. And this is the one that, this is the grease fitting that a lot of people miss. Even shops will miss this one. But there's a cert fitting right up here. And this is a very important one to do. But you do not want to overdo it. Like, like on these uh, drag links and so forth, how we just kept pumping it in and pumping that new grease in, you do not want to do it on this uh, steering box. Because if you do, you could risk uh, rupturing or damaging the pitman, the pitman shaft seal. So we want to put the grease thing up here. It's important to grease. We just don't want to over grease it. Snap it on there. And that's it. Okay, so we got one left. Like I said, the driver's side has six grease fittings, including the steering box. The passenger side has three. And we've already done two of them, which was the kingpin, the lower and the upper. So we've got one left over here. And that's the right tie rod. We've already done the left. So again, we're just gonna clean the dirt and stuff off of that zert fitting. And we're going to just snap this on there and pull the trigger. And that's it. Okay, guys, that pretty much wraps it up. And uh, like I told you, you know, we do this every time we, uh, we do an oil change too. Uh, this is not a big deal. But I just wanted to cover a couple last things in, uh, in summary. Some of you may be saying, Martin, why would I want to go through all this? Why don't I just take it to a shop and let them do it? Well, you could do that. But number one, they're not going to do near as good a job as you are because no one takes care of your, cho your coach better than we do, right? I mean, <laughs> that's just a fact. Number two, most everything that we just used, you're going to have on board anyway. You have to have a bottle jack in case you need to do some work on the road, something breaks, you need to lift that axle, so you're going to need a bottle jack. You're going to need an air compressor for your tires. So really the only thing you need is a pneumatic uh, grease gun and some grease. Taking this in and having a shop do it could cost you anywhere from $99 to maybe $139, $149 a pop. You do that two times a year, and all of a sudden, you know, you're looking at, uh, what, $250, $300. So this is the way to do it. It's cost effective. You're doing it yourself, and you're actually underneath that coach taking care of your house. Um, like I said, I didn't go through every single part number and where you can get a link to it. Like I said in a, a previous video, Joni and I, in the near future, we're going to be building a store and we're gonna have these parts and these tools online because we've already bought the stuff that doesn't work. It's taken us two, almost three years now to figure out what really works. So there's no need to go on Google and go, best greasing gun <laughs> or best uh, quick disconnect. We've already figured that out for you. So if you've liked this video, if this video has helped you, please click that like button and let me know that you liked it. And I'd like some comments too, if you've got some better tips for the rest of us to see, that's great. And if you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to the right so you'll be notified the next time we upload our next video. There you go, guys. A complete video on how to grease a Ford F53 chassis, 
and our 2012 Winnebago Vista 35F. This is RV Street. Stick around. <laughs>